All right, now that we have a pretty good game plan, I'm gonna just go ahead and start blocking in the main forms of the structure. At this point, you wanna make sure you're familiar enough with your 3D program of choice so that you can perform basic modeling functions and understand where the tools and locations are. For example, you should be comfortable with all of the following. Using subselection modes like vertex, edge, loop, face, and element. Converting to edit poly by right clicking on any object so you can go into the edit poly tools. Extrude, bevel, inset, cutting, quick slice, loop and ring selections, and also the connect tool. If you are unclear on any of those tools, then you should refer back to our intro to 3ds Max chapters. So now I'll start with the basic cylinder and make sure the height segments are set to 1. Then I'll scale the top face down so that the taper matches the concept. Now I'm going to jump into a side view and use quick slice to get that slope that tapers towards the front entrance. And I'm going to select the vertical edge rings and do a series of connects so that I can quickly add the stair step towards the top of the bunker. Now I'm just going to select the top face and grow selection and scale those polygons down. Next I'll do two edge loops that go horizontally and add a bevel so it kind of rounds off that top curb edge. Now I've created another cylinder with the side segments set to 6 so that it becomes a hexagon. I'll just start scaling the faces to match the concept form and I'll also extrude out the bottom so that it inter intersects with the bunker base. Okay, so now we have the core of the building blocked in. Let's start adding the entrance corridor and side wings of the structure. Since these elements are symmetrical, we can use the symmetry modifier to make things much quicker. To set that up, I'll just create a box that roughly covers half of the hallway, and then I'll add the symmetry modifier on top of the stack. Next, I'll choose the y-axis. Now, depending on your scene orientation, this can be different, so make sure to reference your gizmo and see which axis is which and I'll check the flip option right below it. Once you have it mirroring in the correct axis, you can expand the symmetry dropdown and click on mirror to manually adjust the point that it mirrors from. For mine, I'm just gonna slide it over until it intersects nicely with the front point of our main structure. If set up correctly, you should be able to click back on editable poly in your modifier stack and any modeling changes you make will automatically be applied to the other side. You do want to make sure the Show End Result button is toggled on here. It should appear as a full white bar so that you can see the effects of all the above modifiers while still working on the bottom layer. There are certain instances where you wouldn't want this option and you'll know when they come up. Now I'm just going to refine this some more by adding more edge loops with Connect and then extruding up the top. I'm also making a lot of these adjustments just by using Edge Mode. Here I'm going to switch to element mode briefly and hold shift as I drag a copy of this piece forward, which will later become my entrance. Then I'll push these sidewalls in and insert some more edge loops by ring selecting the front edges and using another connect. Again, I can't stress enough the importance of ring selection, alt R, and loop selection, alt L, combined with the connect tool, which is control shift E. Now that I have these front polys selected, I'll extrude them out and they will become the final segment of the corridor. Now I'll convert my selection to vertices by holding Control and clicking the Vertex Subobject mode or by hitting Control 1. Next I'll use the Scale tool to flatten the front planes along the x-axis. This is the equivalent to using the Make Planar buttons, but I do it just out of habit. Now I'm going to refine this a little bit more and get closer to the concept. Remember, this is still the early block-in stage of the model, so I don't want to get too carried away with the details. I'm mostly concerned with the proportions and the scale of the object, and at this stage I'm trying to get it exported and to the game engine as quick as possible so that I can view it in context. Now I want to extrude out the ramp from the bunker. Since I'm going to be adding symmetrical details to the base, I decided to set it up with the symmetry modifier as well. Now I can use connect again to section off the faces that I want to extrude, and just like before, I'll extrude it out and adjust it. Now to get the ramp shape, I will use target weld to weld the top vertices to the bottom verts. Remember tar target weld can be found here in the vert subobject mode or you can use the shortcut control shift w. Then you just click the vertex that you want to weld and then click again on the target vertex. Now I'm going to go back and add some windows to the entrance by selecting faces then using the inset tool to get a nice frame of geometry before I extrude inward. Now I'm checking the reference to see which areas I want to add the windows to, and I'll make a few more throughout. 
I want to create a deep enough recess to allow for a layer of alpha detail that will rest in between the glass layer and the outside wall. This will create a nice parallax effect when looking up close and will be relatively inexpensive. Now I'm going to add the secondary planners to the front by using the cut tool to quarantine out the area I want to use. Next I'll delete the faces so that I can rebuild them manually by switching to edge mode and simply shift dragging the edges out. As I've mentioned before, this is one of my favorite, favorite modeling styles because you only create the geometry that you need. Once I have the faces built, I will use target weld again to connect the verts with the hole that I had cut out originally. And I can just switch back to the front view and lower these top row verts so that we have a nice little swoop or dip. Then I'll check my top view and smooth out the planner curve from this view as well. Remember, when working in 3D space, to always check your changes in at least two views and make sure things are where they're supposed to be. Once I have a general curve looking alright, I can go back and insert edges to smooth it out more. Now, to fill in the top of the planner, I will just switch to the border subselection mode by pressing 3 and then click on the open border. Next, locate the cap button and click on it to fill it in. Now with cap, it will try and create a surface from your border, but since my vertices are on different planes, it will look a little sloppy. To remedy this, I will select the top face and click the Make Planar button, but since we don't want this to flatten in a specific axis, we can just click the full Make Planar button as opposed to the individual axes buttons. Now, judging from the concept, it looks like the side wings of this structure are very similar to the entrance corridor, except they're a bit shorter. Rather than creating this from scratch, I will create instance copies of the front and then scale them inward along the y-axis. Remember, instances create a live copy between each other so that any change to the object within the modifier panel will affect all other instances of that same object. Since I'm doing this scale on the object level, however, and not the subselection level, it will not affect the front corridor. This is nice because you can get the same time-saving benefits from instancing and you also get some slight variation with your regular gizmos like move, rotate, scale. Then of course I'm going to hold shift as I rotate this another 180 degrees and create the wing on the right side of the structure. I also need to make sure this is still set to instance. Okay, now I'm ready to start blocking in the roof pieces. For roofs, I always recommend switching to whichever view best captures the essence of the roof. In this case, I'm going to switch to my side view and create a simple plane and position it above the entrance. Next, I'll reduce the segment amounts so that I can start with a clean piece of geometry. I'll also rotate it so that the roof slope is angled, and now I'm ready to start subdividing the surface and modeling the form with more detail. Once it starts to resemble the concept shape, I will take a second and set up the symmetry modifier, just like we've done earlier. With the symmetry modifier, turned on, I can get a much better idea of how the form is looking and make some more tweaks. Next, I'll add the shell modifier in between symmetry and editable poly in the stack. The shell modifier is a quick way to give thickness to a flat surface in 3ds Max, and it makes sure the top and bottom normals are facing the correct direction. If I have edit poly selected when I click the shell, it will automatically order them correctly in the modifier stack. With shell, you adjust the inner or outer amount depending on which direction you want the surface to extrude, and then you're ready. Now the cool thing about having your modifier stack set up like this is that you can start copying faces by shift dragging them in edit poly mode, and then they will already be mirrored and have thickness as you work on them. This does rely on the show end result button being toggled on, as I've mentioned before, but you could also untoggle that if you want to just work on the flat surfaces to better understand the form. Now I'll continue to shape this smaller roof piece and I'll also add a little lip by shift dragging the border edges out and target welding them back together. For the main roof form, I'm going to start with extracting some polygons from the original core structure to use as a starting point. Anytime I add new geometry to a scene, I try and ask myself if there are any polygons nearby that would give me a quicker starting point rather than creating them from scratch. It's a small time saver, but it will definitely add up because I'm not spending as much time rotating, scaling, and placing all new geometry in my scene. Once I shift drag these polygons, I'll choose clone as object so that it becomes its own separate object. And again, I'm just going to shift drag these edges out to further define the surface. 
Once I have the general form of one quarter of the roof, I will set up the shell and symmetry modifiers on this as well. In order to clone this one quadrant around the entire roof, I'm going to use another symmetry modifier to cover the backside. This setup would work fine if the roof piece was completely symmetrical, but as, as you can see in the concept, it has a bit of a swoop to the top edge of the roof. So to achieve this, we can add an FFD 4x4x4 modifier. Now FFD stands for Free Form Deformation. If you've never used it before, it's a simple lattice that, con that has control handles you can use to make broad changes to your mesh, similar to using soft selection. It's great for adding more natural slopes and off-kilter angles to your normally rigid geometry. In this case, I can use it to take my perfectly symmetrical roof and add some asymmetry to the top of the modifier stack. This way, I only have to edit one quarter of the roof geometry and then use the FFD for variation. Now to actually select the FFD handles, just right click on the lattice and choose control points. Then you just marquee select the handles you want to manipulate and either drag, scale, or rotate them with your traditional tools. Now I'm just about done blocking in the main forms, but I want to add the lattice-like beam that runs down the middle cross section of this roof. For this, I'll deselect my objects and switch to the side view of the structure. Now, under the Create tab, I'll switch over to my Shapes menu and click the Line tool. I'll just simply click to add each point of the spline, and I want to make sure that I'm doing single concise clicks so that I don't accidentally create a curved spline, which would result in a lot of excess polygons. Now once you are done creating your spline, you can right click to finalize. Next you want to expand the rendering tab here and check the enable and viewport checkbox. This gives thickness to your line and then you can use this as actual geometry later. You also want to click the generate mapping coordinates checkbox. Clicking generate mapping coordinates is very important because it will make texturing this piece very easy once we apply the material. Now the spline should become visible and you can choose whether you want this to be radial or rectangular and also adjust how many sides and the thickness of either. I will choose rectangular and then tweak the length and width until I'm happy with it. There are many great uses for this line tool combined with the enable and viewport option. For instance, wires, pipes, ropes, cables, branches, handrails, curbs, trims, chains, ivy stems, these are all things I've used this for in the past and it's a really quick uh, setup. I've changed the default color on my objects simply by applying a default gray material. And I've also added a few more roof pieces with the same process that we mentioned earlier. So that just about wraps up the block-in stage of the model. Next we can prepare this file for exporting into CryEngine 3 and assign some placeholder materials. Thank you.